What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and if you don't wanna watch a three hour video on iOS 18, but you also don't want to see all the features that you already know about, you've come to the right spot. Because in this video, I'm gonna be showing you more than 35 of the best hidden features included in iOS 18. Okay, so the first one has to do with the camera application, and that is that you can now change the portrait lighting in photo mode, not just in portrait mode. So in iOS 17, you could only change between these different light modes when you were in the portrait mode but now you can do it in photo if a portrait shot is detected and you press on the F right here this next one's for my iPhone 16 user so if you go to your capture button menu right here and then you swipe over until you go to cameras and then go into the cameras menu if you go all the way over to the left we have a selfie option so you can now switch to the selfie camera straight from the camera control button that's nice now here's a feature that's going to go very under the radar and very underrated and that is that we now have a shortcut for launching spotlight search so take a look at what happens when i press and hold on my action button here it invokes spotlight search and you may be wondering well can't you just do that from swiping down right here yeah but what if you're in safari for example or what if you're in you know music for example you can't really access the spotlight search but now if i have to press right here i can invoke spotlight search without having to go out of that application and that is nice but the feature here is inside of the shortcuts application so it's a new action that's called search so all you have to do is go into your actions and then search for search and it says open search and performs a search for the specified text and you'll have to let me know how many times I just said search in one sentence. And then I just set my action button to be on shortcuts and to launch the shortcut that I just made with search. And you could also map this to the lock screen controls if you want to as well. But that's a nice new feature that's also in 18.1. But wait, we also have one for control center. So if we go ahead and press on my action button, I can invoke the control center as well because that's another new action here with iOS 18. Also in iOS 18, you can now send images up to 100 megabytes at full resolution in iMac. Message. So for some reason, this was not a thing before, but now with iOS 18, it is. Also in messages, if you tap on the plus to the left right here and go to send later, if you schedule a message, but maybe your phone is turned off or you're in airplane mode or you don't have signal, that message will still be delivered at the time and date that you selected because that message waits on the iMessage servers until the scheduled date and time. Also in iOS 18, you can now change how a link appears in your message thread. So if you tap on a link, you can see you can now now convert to text link and also customize and if you go to customize you can choose between different thumbnails for that link and if I paste another link in there from a website we can do the same thing here we can go to customize and you can choose between different variations or you can just convert it to a text link only you can also now send stickers and emojis in the same message and you can also search for stickers based on the name of the pet or person now here's one that got a lot of comments recently on my best settings to change in iOS 18 video and that is the blinking cursor so I'm sorry in advance because you probably never noticed this before but that blinking cursor you can stop it from blinking go into your settings and go down to accessibility go into motion and then down here we have prefer non-blinking cursor and when you turn that on and you go back you'll notice that your cursor is just a solid line and it's not blinking anymore i didn't realize so many people were annoyed from a blinking cursor but there you go now when you're in a focus mode and somebody messages you it just says messages instead of the contact's name so it's a little bit less distracting now in the maps application when you search for something based on the area like Mexican food in this general area right here the search area that I searched here will no longer research when I zoom in or out or I move slightly so if I zoom out a little bit maybe to see what's around here you'll notice that it doesn't start adding results down here I have to hit search now if I want to you know add more results or leave these results behind but if I move too far it will start searching there so once these get out of view it will start searching in a new area now a lot of people didn't realize this but an iOS 18 you can now interrupt Siri mid sentence tell me a long joke tell me a better one so you can see that you can interrupt Siri mid sentence but if you don't like that you can change that in your settings and if you go to accessibility and then down here we have require Siri for interruptions so if you don't want to be able to interrupt Siri you can turn that off so that you need to say Siri or hey yes in order to interrupt so you know how you can record voice notes in the notes application well did you know that you could also do it while your phone is locked so if you lock your phone while you're recording a voice note it will continue recording and the voice memos application you can easily 
replace words and sentences in a recording. So if you go into the recording right here, you'll notice that the first word down here is replace. So all you have to do is set this playhead at the part that you want to replace what comes after that, and it will record over it automatically. So if I tap on replace, you can see that it turns red, and now it replaces those you know, wave lines with however I'm talking now, and it overwrites the existing recording. And then you get the option to save it as a new recording if you want. And this isn't really hidden, but a lot of people overlook it. You could also add voice memos to your lock screen as a toggle. And if you have to press on that, it will just start recording right away. And you get this really nice animation up here out of the dynamic island straight from your lock screen. So that can also be very convenient. And the photos app, you can now add or remove existing albums inside of folders. So I have this, you know, album here inside of a folder. If I have to press on that, you can see I can remove from folder now. Before, you could not do that. You only had the option to delete the album. Also in the photos app, if you swipe up on a photo that's inside of an album or albums, it will show all the albums it's included in down at the bottom. And if you just added a photo to an album and you want to add another photo to the album, the next time that you have to press on a photo, it will prompt you to add to that specific album instead of having to go to add to album and tap on it and do that whole process every single time. If you edit a photo with a lot of different changes here and you go to copy those edits, you'll see that we have a new option here for adapt copy and this is probably going to be the optimal setting for most people to have selected because it says that this will automatically detect certain image conditions and adapt adjustments to match the perceived exposure and white balance of this image if possible and this only applies when you have adjust selected right here and now when I go to paste those edits it will look a lot better because that was adaptive and you can see that it looks pretty much the same as the previous one if you have an Apple intelligence device and you go to the cleanup feature and you circle a face, it will automatically blur it and say safety filter applied. You can now change an app to a widget without leaving the home screen. So just haptic press on the application and you'll see this little pop up right here and you can turn it into a widget just from simply tapping on any of those icons based on the size that you want. So this only comes in one size, but you can see how it works there. With iOS 18.1, you can now create a better connectivity platter. So before we were just stuck with this platter right here for our Wi-Fi and VPN, but now they have standalone toggles so you can create your own little widget here you can now remove multiple songs from a playlist at one time by simply tapping on the circle right here and you can remove them all at one time you can now share a podcast at a specific time so if you go to share episode and you go to from start you can now choose from the timestamp that you were at and then you can send it to somebody and they will only listen to it from that point on in the books application we can finally adjust the margin so if you go to the themes and settings section and then go to customize and then go to customize under layout options you'll see that we now have margins so we can adjust those in the default books app now if you just went deep in the settings you can now access your recent paths straight from the settings search bar so if you go to search right here it will show you your recents so for example I was in text message forwarding it can take me all the way to that section in settings with a simple tap we now have t9 dialing in the phone application so if I wanted to type out Apple I could just do that right there in the files application if you want to save something for offline use you could just tap and hold and then go to keep downloaded and it will keep it downloaded for offline use in the passwords application you can now share sign in with Apple logins with groups in the calendar you can pinch to change the size of the calendar view and the next time you go into the calendar it will stay at whatever you had it set to last there's two new background sounds and you can access these by tapping on the little ear icon in the control center and we have background sounds right here Ear, and the new ones are night and fire and by the way the ear is called hearing if you want to add it to your control center in the home application you can now change what your default home hub is so you have automatic selection enabled by default but if you deselect that you can choose what your preferred home hub is in your smart home if you have an SSD or any type of external drive connected to your device you can now format that drive in the files application now here's one that you probably know if you watch my videos but if not you might not know this so if you shoot a video in 60 fps or higher you can go to edit right here and you'll see this little speedometer up in the top right hand corner if you tap on that you can change the frame rate or the playback speed by 50 percent so you can see i can go down to 30 fps 
for a certain section of the video. Also in the camera application, you can now tap and hold on the flash icon to pull up the menu. In the calculator application, you're no longer limited on space, so you can just type as many numbers as you want and you will never run out of space like you could on previous iOS versions. And you can just scroll and scroll and scroll until you get to whatever number you're looking to get to. The math notes feature is actually really useful if you know how to use it. So I have written out some tax deductions here along with a price next to them. So if you write it like this, you can actually add everything up and have a math problem based on these variables. And if I type in equals, you can see it will select those items and give me the result right there. And it's not just for math problems either. You could also do this for conversions. In iOS 18, when you turn off the flashlight, it slowly fades away instead of going out right away like it did in iOS 17. And then the final one is if your phone is dead, you can now keep track of the time. So you can see when the phone's dead, we still have the time up there in the top left-hand corner. So those are some of my favorite hidden iOS 18 features. So if you watch my channel religiously, if you watch the three hour video, you probably already knew at least most of these. But if not, if you found at least a couple of useful features in this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And also if you're new here, make sure to subscribe. I make a lot of iOS 18 and iPhone 16 now videos. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.